This third sling loading tutorial is about the invert phase. There will be some definitions and phrases defined in the two previous videos, links in the description. The invert phase is a time after the load has been picked up and before the approach and delivery of the load. In this video we will discuss the transition to and from the invert phase, the invert phase itself, and how to manage the load while doing so. Before starting each mission, it is a very good idea to map out the route to be flown. If during the enroute phase you should at any time release or lose the load, the load should not hurt anyone or damage any property on the ground. There is no doubt that the enroute phase is the easiest part of sling loading operations, and it's also the easiest phase to get complacent in. Therefore, it is important to establish some simple rules to follow. After we have chosen a safe route to fly, the enroute phase is very much about speed management. The flight manual states at what airspeed you can fly with an underslung load. For the H125, the maximum airspeed is 80 knots. But that does not mean we can't fly every load at 80 knots. My old instructor used to talk about the V&E of the load. The V&E of the load is the airspeed at which the load starts oscillating or spinning at an increasing or uncontrollable rate. There are countless types of shapes of loads and generally, I find, the best way to determine how fast you can fly a load is to gradually and incrementally increase the airspeed while monitoring the load. What I mean by that is to increase the airspeed in stages. So fly the load up to about 30 knots and see how it acts for a few seconds. If it is stable, move up to 40 knots, monitor the movement and behavior of the load at 40 knots. If it's still fine, speed it up to 45 knots and so on and so forth. After you have found the speed, you can generally safely accelerate up to it with that type of load. Just remember to do it in stages again for each new type of load. After a while, you will gain an idea about what type of load can be flown at what speed just by looking at them on the ground. I will not go into detail about the different types here, but generally, if they are big and light, they produce a lot of drag and need to be flown slowly. Compact and high density loads like big bags or full concrete buckets can generally be flown at the flight manual limit of 80 knots. Here is another example of what reaching the V&E of the load looks like. It starts out seemingly fine, but when you hit a certain airspeed, it starts to rotate quickly and also oscillate. If the airspeed is increased further from this point, the rotation and oscillations would most likely increase. The acceleration is stopped here and the load is kept at a manageable level of rotation. From the ground, this load looked almost identical to the previous one. But here, the load starts to rotate under the downwash of the helicopter. But when getting up to a little higher speed, the rotation stops. Here, you can probably increase the airspeed a little and fly it faster than the previous load. One thing to keep in mind is that when delivering the load, it might start to spin again under the downwash. When slowing down at the end of the enroute phase to transition into the approach, I aim to be at a certain speed at a certain point in space. I determine this point with a point over the ground for lateral position and the altimeter for altitude. The position should be sufficiently far away from the delivery area that you can easily go around or stop the approach should a problem arise. With altitude I like to aim for a point that will give me a nice and controllable descent and high enough so that I don't have to fly the load too much horizontally on the approach. It should just have a smooth, continuous descent. With the speed, I set it to what I feel comfortable with. Also here, the airspeed should not be so fast that you cannot abort the approach comfortably. When flying slower than 40 knots airspeed, the airspeed indicator is not very reliable, so this becomes more of a feeling. It is possible to use the GPS for a speed reference, just keep in mind that this is ground speed and not airspeed. If you look down through the sling window, it should generally look like a walking pace. This cabin is the destination. My starting point for the approach will be about here, 100 meters or so from the cabin. The altitude I'm aiming for is about 2,400 feet.
Here I am at the starting point of the approach. Looking down and using my peripheral vision, I determine that the airspeed is good for the approach. I have an escape route out to the front right if I need to go around. At this airspeed, I can also easily stop the load in a hover if I need to. Doing it this way with parameters, it's easy to change and adjust the approach, or keep it consistent if you have found a set of parameters that work well with the approach. If you have exceeded the v &E of your load and it's spinning or oscillating a lot, slowing down to a near hover can often help stabilize the load or at least reduce the oscillations and spinning to a manageable level. If it doesn't because the load is heavy and has built up too much momentum and there are people in the delivery area that need to handle the load before it touches the ground, you must stop this oscillation and or spinning before the ground crew can touch it. This is usually done by slowly lowering the load onto a tree or putting it gently to the ground. It is preferable to do it closer to the delivery area, for example on or close to the final approach, so the load does not have time to spin up and start oscillating again before the delivery. After the delivery is complete and you return to your load master with an empty hook, also here we need to be aware of the airspeed, especially if you have a fiber long line. If the conditions are turbulent and bumpy and you are descending quickly, the long line can hit the tail rotor if you are not careful and flying too fast. You don't necessarily need to be at the flight manual limit of 80 knots for this to become a factor. Also here, it is better to start slow and increase the airspeed in stages and see how the line and hook behave. Conclusion. Do not overfly people or things on the ground that can get hurt should you drop or lose the load. With each new type of load, accelerate incrementally to see the behavior of the load. End your en route phase at a set point in space so that you can more easily adjust your approach on the next loads. Thanks for watching. See you next time.